hi everybody i'm robin and these are my reflections or maybe i should say confessions because here i am showing you something that i bought on an impulse i promise you this is on a whim i shout out to amazon for having like next day delivery because i cannot believe that i did not know that this deck existed but it does and i didn't but i do now and i have it and I have it like next day. So that is fabulous. I'm very excited. Um, this is the Hara Tarot by Todd Alcott. Now, if you're not aware, Todd Alcott is the creator of the Pulp Tarot. And the Pulp Tarot is a deck that I do own. I have the second edition. Here it is, just so you can see it. Let me just put them side by side here. Um, this is a deck of pulp uh, fiction images well he it's his style so he does he he does images that some of them are like collage images or he redoes images where he makes it in a pulp fiction style right and it's cute it's it's easy to read it's fun i love this deck i think it is one of my favorites as far as like pop culture decks go it's just very well done even the little guidebook the little guidebook takes you on a little journey through it, kind of takes you into the creator's mind. So I would suggest that if you have a second, you haven't taken a look at the little white book. I know it doesn't seem like much because it is just a little white book, but it does give you a really good, um, a really good walk through the world of these cards. So that is the pulp tarot. And now we have the horror tarot. Now it looks like if you have the second edition of the pulp tarot, it does come in the same size box. So that's cool. They'll look nice together on the shelf. So let's get this one out of the plastic and take a look. Okay, so this is the box. Very nice. It does look like a well-worn book, like it has shelfware and yep, has the backs are similar, very similar. Yeah, they, it says the creator of the Pulp Tarot returns with this kaleidoscopic plunge into the world of horror graphics, guaranteed to send chills down your spine. Todd Alcott's Hara Tarot is a full tarot deck of 78 cards with bespoke instruction booklet to guide you through the thrilling and terrifying world of the major arcana and all four gasp-inducing suits of the minor arcana. Divine your future with bone-chilling images inspired by over 100 years of horror graphics, evoking movie posters, fan magazines, paperback books, classic comics, and pulp magazines. Your fate is in your hands by the Unemployed Philosophers Guild. Is that the same publisher as the other one? The Unemployed Philosophers Guild? Yep, same publisher. That's funny. It probably made me laugh last time I saw it. Okay, so this is what the edge of this one looks like. It's green because it's horror. And like the other one, there's no magnetic closure. So what I did on this box is I just took a magnetic strip, cut it in half, and I put one half here and one half here so that I could, um, so that it closes and that holds it shut for the most part. Now, if I turn it upside down and shake it, it's not going to work. But um, for the most part, that's pretty good. You know, it's pretty good. So I would say like if you can get a strip from like Walmart or Michaels or wherever you can buy your magnetic strips, you could do the same. And I'm probably going to do the same for this if I can find the, if I can find it again. <laughs> I got to find the, um, what I did with it because it's been a while since I bought the other one. This is the inside of the box. It has this little paper tray, ribbon, blood. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look. Here are the cards. Same card stock as the other deck. This is like um, what people call the cereal box stock. It's like a semi-gloss, um, kind of cardboardy. Let's see the backs. Ooh. Now, I did see the backs on Amazon. I saw that they were this green-looking I don't know. It just reminds me of like R.L. Stein books and stuff. So, like, <laughs> so I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. So yeah, those are the facts. And the size of it is normal tarot size. Um, any normal tarot size deck is about the same size. Hang on. So this is a normal tarot size card. You can see that they are the exact same size. I like the, the corners of this, the rounded corners of this. It makes it feel like... Um, like a date book or, or like an old school date book or um, I don't know, like, you know how when um, you watch those movies and they're, the detectives always had like one of these little books to write stuff down on before they had the spiral notebooks, they had these and it just feels, it feels old and like an old movie situation or like something I used to 
have when I was a kid, which yes, it dates me. Yes, I'm old. So I'm just going to read from you for you just a little bit of this so you can get a feel for it. It says there are moral dangers everywhere. The world is a scary place. There are madmen who rule nations, madmen who rule corporations, and madmen who rule everyday families. There are accidents and disasters, venomous insects and predatory animals, both four-legged and two-legged, creatures who mean you harm. We respond to real-life terrors by creating fictional terrors. The monsters of real life are transformed into monsters of the page and screen. A nation's fear of invasion by foreigners creates Dracula. A society's fear of science gone too far creates Frank Frankenstein. A generation's fear of losing their souls creates armies of the walking dead. Monster movies are warnings to society. Don't play with radiation or you'll get Godzilla. Don't engage in premarital sex or you'll get Michael Myers. Don't venture into the woods or you'll get the Blair Witch. Horror stories like fairy tales exist for us to experience our mortal fears in a fantastical setting, to experience our inevitable deaths in a safe environment where we know it's all just for show. To convey the complex messages of the tarot, I've explored five distinct graphics words, worlds, four for the major arcana and one for the minor arcana. For the major arcana, I thought it would be fun to pay homage to the horror movies I've enjoyed since my youth. I dreamed up an imaginary movie studio, horror tarot studio, populated it with imaginary filmmakers and created 22 posters for movies they might have made if they had existed. That's awesome. I love the way he creates these images that look like they could have been something he just, they look like they could just be pictures that he uh, took uh, from printings that were already like he went to the library and found these books and took pictures, but he creates them in that style. I think it's so cool. So I'll read about the wands and the cups and all of the others as we go through the deck so that we can remember as we go. So then it goes into the major arcana and what it is, a brief history of Hara Terror Studios, which I'm, I cannot wait to read, and then information about the majors. And then for the minors, you have just a little bit less, but I'm sure it's a story because the other one was the same. Let's see. And we'll, we'll read through it later. We'll pick some cards um, from the majors and the minors and read. And then his acknowledgments. He always thanks his wife, which I think is so sweet. And then that's it. So that's the guidebook and we'll get back to it at the end. Let's get into the cards. I'm very excited about these cards. <laughs> Let's get into it. So we've got a white border, no black interior border. So just like the second edition of the Pulp Tarot, that interior black border is gone. We're making the images just slightly bigger. And then we've got the title and then the image. And look at this girl sleepwalking off of this cliff. So it says the fool, take the step. <laughs> Hara Tarot. Oh, look, there's stuff down here. Hara Tarot presents Major Arcana Number zero, the fool, a symbol of enthusiastic innocence. You are beginning a vast journey in life, but you are not afraid of the challenges before you before you because you live in the moment. Oh, so there's like phrases down there, like like the meaning of the card. I thought it was just gonna be like, you know, like on a movie poster where they just put like title like uh who did it, the producers and stuff down here, but it's actually the mean like meanings written um as if it was the credits so that's cool that's neat he holds the power of all the el oh so i wonder if all of these cards are gonna have keywords on them or like key phrases so this one says the magician he holds the power of all the elements in the palm of his hands hard tarot presents card number one the major arcana the magician is a symbol of manifestation and unlimited potential he knows all and sees all he is resourceful and pure, or he is a fraud and a charlatan. Proceed with caution. Oh, okay. So we've got upright and reverse meanings on here. The high priestess major arcana number two. This one doesn't have um this one doesn't have any words on it. I love the the hard tarot presents is coming up in different ways. Like this one looks like what is that? This one is Universal, looks like Universal Studios. It's not, of course, but it's similar. And this one I think is Paramount. So that's neat. Just all the attention to detail makes me smile. So this one does have some words on it. I'm not gonna read them all out, but 
ultimate authority rests with him. Authority rests with him, the emperor. Cool. The hierophant. He sees through the material world and into your very soul. <laughs> <laughs> the lovers what in the world is going on with his head so this is like king kong with a bag on his head love is grand but it's always it always leads to trouble a symbol of love harmony relationships and choices the warrior drives at night under a crescent moon no hands on the wheel he steers by force of will i love this I love this. I love the way um, he's integrated the meanings of the cards into the movie poster. So it looks like it would just be like what you would write on a movie poster, but it's not. It actually, all of the words are meaningful. They, they're they all meaningful, which I mean, is typical for this creator. Everything on the card is always meaningful. Pick a fate, any fate. <laughs> She, oh, is this, is this Carrie? No, she's got a sword. Well, she's got a sword because it's the Justice card, but I think is this is similar to Carrie. The Hanged Man. We dare you to look at the world from his point of view. <laughs> so he said that he made up these movies as if the studio would create them, right? So there's death. Temperance. Uh-oh, her eyes are covered. Earth and water, pleasure and pain, life and death, everything in moderation. Your life is in the balance. Devil. <laughs> this reminds me of the devil card from the fifth spirit tarot. The tower. The star. Love it. The moon. Of course, we have a, a werewolf, but it's a space werewolf. A werewolf in outer space. I feel like that's a movie. I feel like that's a comedy from the 80s. Werewolves in outer space. <laughs> the sun. This one looks reminds me of Firestarter. Nothing burns harder. Judgment. The, it, there's something here. I'm not sure what that means at the top. Um, it's in maybe German or something. If anybody knows, let me know. The end is here. The world. The world can be a scary place. Brutal things have a natural cycle. As one thing grows in influence, another thing diminishes. The world contains all things. It cannot be reduced or expanded or rearranged. All are welcome and have a place in this completion. Cool. All right. And so then we get into the suit of wands. Let me just read from the book what the suit of wands is. The suit of wands images are original paintings inspired by the work of the artist Basil Gogos, who created dozens of portraits of classic monsters in the 1960s and 1970s for the horror movie buff magazine, Famous Monsters of Filmland. Gogo's paintings with their psychedelic colors and dramatic side lights brought the black and white monsters of the 1930s movies to vivid life. They have become definitive images in the minds of many horror fans. And I wanted to capture that energy for this suit. So let's take a look. We've got the ace, the two of wands. And I love this about um, the other deck as well, where the wands, the the name of the suit is very prominent on the card. So when you're laying them out, you can see very clearly how many of what suit you have on the table. So I can see all the wands together. I can see I have five wands and two swords, or I have three swords and two majors. It's very quickly I can see it. This is cool. Four of wands. Reunited and reconciled, the monster comes home. <laughs> Five of Wands, when monsters fight. <laughs> the six, victory, at what cost? Uh-oh. The seven, trapped, but who is the monster? The eight of Wands, change is coming, something is in the air. Nine of Wands, survival is a matter of perseverance and vice versa. Ooh, and the Ten of Wands. Ooh, look at his face. Who will carry the burden? 
I know this movie. What is this? This is um Quasimodo, right? Or it's it's supposed to be like Quasimodo. Suit of Wands, the Page of Wands. New ideas, new energy, limitless potential, free spirit. The Knight of Wands, passion, adventure, impulse, inspired action. Great keywords. The Queen of Wands, courage, confidence, independence, determination. Look at her. Fabulous. I can see her vocal cords. <laughs> so neat. And the Cake of Wands, vision, honor, leadership, ultimate masculine energy. I'm noticing a few more um, people of color in this one, which in the other one, definitely, there. I think there was only just one person. So that's nice to see that he took that note. So this is the um, Ace of Cups. For the Suit of Cups, I wanted to honor the many days I spent in the 1980s reading the horror paperbacks of the time. To give the suit a dramatic through line, I created a fictional writer's group, also called Horror Tarot, and gave them a 14 volume master work that such a group could have produced over the d decade of publishing. <laughs> okay, so there. So this is a 14 volume work, the Ace of Cups, the Two of Cups. So we've got like a series of books here. The Three of Cups. This one doesn't have any keywords on it. Four of Cups, but the images are very RWS. Five of Cups. The Six of Cups. Cute. This one reminds me of the zombie tarot. The Seven of Cups. I love that. The ghost in the background. <laughs> Eight. Ooh, look at this eight. Oh, that's curious. I like it. The nine. <laughs> Is she like in a bathtub, a skull bathtub with blood, like bathing in blood? Um, vampire style. The ten of cups. Here's our page. Very cute with her fishy. All the bowls are skulls. <laughs> All the cups are skulls. Um, the knight. I love his glasses. Very charming. <laughs> the queen. Very 80s charm, right? Also. And the king. Welcome to the world of the emotionally balanced man, it says. So this is the only one I saw of the cups with keywords on it. That's interesting. It would have been nice to have the consistency there, there throughout. So now we've got the swords. For the suit of swords, I wanted to create a tribute to EC horror comics of the 1950s. EC published a number of sensational, weird, gory titles. The Vault of Horror, Tales from the Crypt, Weird Science, and many more. The covers of their comics were so over the top in their depictions of violence, sadism, lechery, and abject cruelty that they prompted their very own congressional investigation, which eventually led to their demise and the introduction of the Comics Code Authority. For this deck, I created a publisher called, you guessed it, Haratera Comics, and dreamed up the stories you see illustrated here. So these are comic books, The Suit of Swords, Featuring inspiration, sudden insight, and challenges ahead. So this one has, these have keywords. I wish that that would have been more consistent. If it's going to be a deck with keywords, let it be a deck with keywords or not. And I think most of these do have keywords on them. So it would have been nice if they all did, I think. But, you know, we can work without it, but it would just been more consistent, I think. The Suit of Swords, brutal tale of victory in the tradition. <laughs> That is a brutal tale. It's interesting how all of these had the bubbles and this one doesn't. I wonder why. And now we're back to the bubbles. So here's the eight. No, this is a six. She's in the boat. This is a six. Where's the number six? Ah, it's here. Six. Okay. The seven. She's fair. She does look a bit like she's up to something. The eight. Well, she is bound, isn't she? Isolation, abandonment, and restriction. 
are the keywords here. The nine, nightmares, debilitating fear and crippling anxiety. And even though this is small, I can actually read this. Maybe it's the font. Um, oh, again, no bubbles, but it does have keywords. An alarming tale of doom is the uh, key phrase on this. And then this, I think it says world's best dad on this cup. <laughs> so that's not anything. But that poor dad is dead. Page of swords. Curiosity, new ideas, and positive change. Look at her dissecting this poor dude. The Knight of Swords. The Queen of Swords. Unbiased tale of independence in the tradition. And the King of Swords. An absorbing tale of intellectual authority in the tradition. <laughs> Big brain. Um, okay, so now we're on to the last suit, which is the pentacles. It says the suit of pentacles. I was inspired by covers from various horror pulp magazines of the 1930s and 40s. Horror tales, terror tales, ghost stories, uncanny tales, and many others. Like the EC comics that followed in their footsteps. The covers for these magazines usually featured lurid paintings of exceptionally cr exceptional cruelty and torture as mad scientists, foreign invaders, and red robbed cultists practice their evil deeds. The fictional publisher of these magazines, Horror Terror Publications, is unrelated to the comics publisher, the movie studio, or the famous writer's group. Unrelated, huh? <laughs> so it says, the suit of pentacles. Okay. So the ace of pentacles. This one does have keywords. Uh, manifesting your material goals. A journey into equilibrium. They worked together to create perfection. The collector, it says. The four of pentacles is the collector. Yeah, that one is definitely some horror right there. Um, and that, this one kind of, when he said at the beginning when we were reading in the guidebook and it said that there are some real life uh, creatures that are out to hurt us, that's what that brings to mind. So this is, this is the five of pentacles. Also similar, right? These girls being trapped. I don't, I don't, if this is, uh, that, it makes me a little uncomfortable, but I think, you know, as a hard tarot, it's supposed to. The suit of pentacles, the six of pentacles, the spirit of charity. This is the seven of pentacles. Look upon my works. <laughs> this reminds me of the Columbia Pictures lady. Um, this is the eight, the apprentice. It's a little bit difficult to find the numbers on here. So these are written out. Some of them are actual numbers because I keep looking here where it says 15 cent, but that's not the number. In the lap of luxury. The 10 of pentacles, the gang's all here. The page is the manifestation of an abundant harvest. Slow and steady wins the race. This one doesn't, oh, th no, this one doesn't have a, um, any keywords. The king of pentacles, the man who has everything. All right, so let's zoom out and see about the shuffle. And yeah, they shuffle great, just like the other deck. Now they will hold a bow if you do, if you're gonna, if you're a riffler, uh, I noticed that they do hold the bow a little bit, so you do need to riffle both ways. So like riffle and bridge or riffle this way and then turn them around and riffle that way and then they're fine. But if you just riffle one way consistently, they're gonna get a bow. And that's most decks though, right? Um, that's the edges and yeah, they shuffle great. Let's see, the overhand, overhand, smooth, you're an overhander. If you are a fanner, smooth like butter. So let's pick a card and read from the guidebook. We'll pick one major and one minor. What do we get? The emperor and the what of cups, the eight of cups. It's hard to find the numbers. I will say that, but that's perfect. We got a major and a minor. So right up for the emperor. Russian director Dmitry Vasilev, 
I don't know, trained under Einstein and fled the country during the chaos of the communist revolution. Like so many European filmmakers of the time, he moved to Hollywood and found a home at Har Taro Studios, where his first film for the company was a thinly veiled critique of Russian imperialism. His emperor, his emperor is half Machiavellian mastermind and half sorcerer. Michael Penrod, who played the title role, described him as part Ivan the Terrible, part Rasputin. He's a symbol of male power, the guy in charge. He doesn't exactly make the rules. It's more like a case of he does what he wants and then everyone else says that's the new rule. So is he a benevolent protector or a petty tyrant? At its best, the emperor examines both sides of the question of male dominance the force that attracts others to its power and the force that destroys lives and families. I like that. That's good for, that's good for Hara Taro because it does, it does, um, it does just that. It uh, explores both sides and he made up these people, but he talks about them like they're real. He had me thinking, who is this person? And then I had to remember that he said that it's a fake um, studio with fake actors. So, <laughs> so let's look at the eight of cups. Here is the, the, the write-up for that. So it says, Volume 8 of the Suit of Cups concerns Marianne Jobraith, a Southern belle in Louisiana who is drawn into the world of cups by a local soothsayer, Madame Poutine, who is revealed to be a powerful voodoo priestess. Under Madame Poutine's influence, Marianne takes a moonlight, moonlit journey into the depths of her soul. The Eight of Cups is a card about that journey. It's a journey that often leads to disappointment, abandonment, and withdrawal from the world. Ooh, yes. Let's look it up. Let's see if we can find a, let's see if we can find a um, court card. Here's the King of Cups. Let's look at the King of Cups. There's the write-up for that one if you want to read it. It says, serving as a coda to the entire series, the King of Cups presents the final chapter in the story of Jason Thorne. Jason has been through a lot in his emotional journey, and his head has transformed into a grinning golden skull. His many challenges, while they have transformed him physically, have finally brought him peace and wisdom. The King of Cups card is about that emotional wisdom, wisdom that can only be attained through experience. I like this. It's a social commentary, which surprises me. I did not expect that from it, but this is what happens when you buy a deck sight unseen. Sometimes you get surprised. But... I do, I'm liking it. I like the, the way that it sticks with the theme. Um, I like the way the commentary is being made. And I like the supportive guidebook that came with it. The guidebook is great, as, as was the one in the other deck. Um, I also really like the way he like created studios to go with it. And, you know, just kind of brought that theme through. That's fun. It's just fun. It's a fun little journey. Um, even though it's a, it's a it's very it's a pretty serious social commentary, and I'm looking forward to reading the rest of that guidebook and what more he has to say and how he um, got what he had to say out into this artwork and these cars and out into the world. So, yes, this is cool. I like it. I'm very excited to have it. You'll have to let me know what you think if you're going to pick it up or if you've already picked it up. How how is it reading for you? One thing that I really loved about the other deck is that the um, Keywords, I mean, that the titles are very consistent across the cards. So I can pick out really quickly where the wands are, where the pentacles are, where the cup, well, the cups are a little different, but I can pick up really quick because see cups and cups, they look a little different, but I can pick up really quickly the wands. I see them very clearly here. Um, I can see this is pentacles and I can also see that that one is a pentacle. So I like that about the way that he's, he does the titles on these cards. There's the swords. So yeah, that's cool. And it looks like it's going to be the same with reading this one. And yeah, I'm looking forward to using this. Um, you'll have to let me know what you think in the comments below. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from me, you can subscribe. I release videos every few days regarding tarot and oracle. I will link in the description box below where you can pick up a legitimate copy of this. And until I see you next time, Stay safe and be blessed. Bye.